So how do we calculate the excavation? Is it just the volume of sand to be replaced by a concrete element? Or is it the volume of sand to be replaced by a concrete element plus the volume of sand on top of that? Do we keep allowances for working space like carpenters and steel fixers when they are working on the foundations, they need space. So when we calculate the excavation, do we consider these allowances in our quantity? All these questions and more will be answered in this video. So hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmed Adel and this is Cost Engineering Professional. And in this video, we'll be talking about section B of the BOQ in accordance with principles of measurement international, which is site works. We have talked a lot about the principles of measurement international in the previous videos, and I am leaving all the links to these videos in the description down below. So keep watching. All right, guys, welcome back. So regarding the site works here, section B, in accordance with POMI, the section B, which is site works, consists of 26 subsections. And in our previous video, we have talked up to section six. So we are starting from section seven or subsection number seven here, which is the underpinning. So what is underpinning? So in construction or renovation, underpinning is the process of strengthening the foundation of an existing building or other structure. So the underpinning is strengthening the foundations of an existing building. So underpinning may be necessary for a variety of reasons. And the first reason can be that the original foundation is it strong or stable enough, or the usage of the structure has changed and some extra loads has came on the structure or something like that. So we might need the underpinning. So work in underpinning shall be given under an appropriate heading stating the location. So we have so many headings in the BOQ when you are making a BOQ in accordance with POMI as we are discussing in these POMI videos, you have many headings. So the works that you need to do in terms to achieve an underpinning should come under the appropriate section for each of them. So if the works include some excavation, it should come under the excavation. If they include some concrete and reinforcement work, they should come in the concrete bill. If, for example, you need some dewatering, it should come in the general requirements and so on. So, and you have to specify the location of the underpinning as well in the description in the BOQ. Point number two here, they are saying, unless otherwise stated, work shall be measured in accordance with the appropriate sections of POMI. Again, as per POMI, you have so many sections and under these sections, the items will come. And the POMI is teaching you or telling you how to measure these items or these works. So all the works associated with underpinning should be measured in accordance of how these items should be measured in accordance with POMI. So point number three here, temporary support shall be given as an item. So if you need to expose some foundation, you need some temporary support or something, then you have to give this in the BOQ as an item and particulars shall be given where the design of the temporary support is not at the discretion of the contractor. If you are not letting the contractor to do whatever support he wants, you need a specific type of support, then you have to give particular. You need to specify exactly what type of support is required for the underpinning works. All right. So again, under the same subsection, which is underpinning works, excavation shall be measured by volume taken to the outside line of the projecting foundation or to the outside line of the new foundations, whichever is greater. So if you are doing an underpinning, you might be like increasing the size of an existing foundation. So the new foundation or the proposed foundation will be bigger than the existing one. So when you are calculating the excavation required for the underpinning, you have to consider the size of the bigger foundation. This is what they are saying here. We will learn more about the excavation in this video, actually, when we reach the subsection of the excavation. But at this point of time, this information will be enough. So excavation in preliminary trenches down to the base of the existing foundations. This is the first one. And we have excavation below the base of the existing foundations. Because if you want to do some strengthening works or if you want to increase the size of the foundation, then two excavations will be there. 
The first excavation will be made to expose the existing foundation and the second excavation will be under the existing foundation in order to do some works or to increase the size of the foundation. Cutting away projecting foundations shall be measured by length. So if you have some kind of a strip footing and you need to cut some part of the strip footing in order to connect the steel reinforcement to increase the size of the strip footing and all these things. So the cutting of the strip footing, this should be measured by length. You need to measure how many linear meters of footing will be cut as an item in the BOQ. Okay, subsection number eight, which is earthwork generally. So any information available concerning the nature of the ground and the strata shall be provided within the bill of quantities. So if you have any information about the soil layers that the excavation is going to happen in, you have to give the details of these layers or these ground layers that are there in the bill of quantity. Point number two here, the quantities for excavation, dredging or tunneling, and we will know what are these things. Also, some of them in this video and some in the upcoming videos shall be understood to be the bulk before excavation and no allowances shall be made for any working space or subsequent variation in bulk. Existing voids shall be deducted. So when you are calculating the excavation, you are calculating the exact volume that you must excavate. You are not allowing for any extra workspace. And this actually answers the question that we have raised in the beginning of this video. So you are not allowing for any workspace. If you have a foundation, you have to measure the excavation quantity exactly as per the foundation that you have. It's like you are cutting in a piece of cheese. That's it. Okay, and if there are any voids, these voids has to be deducted from the volume that you are excavating because you are not excavating these voids. So if there is a caving or something in the soil, you have to deduct that. Okay, point number three here, multiple handling of materials and the transporting about the site shall be understood to be included and multiple handling, which is required by the specification, shall be so described in the item of disposal so here guys we are talking about the earth works generally and we haven't talked about the excavation yet or the disposal yet or the filling yet but here let me brief you until we reach to that particular subsection they are telling you that multiple handling of materials and the transporting about the site shall be understood to be included generally for the earth works so, for example, if you have an excavator that is excavating a site and the site is big, so one excavator is excavating from this point and it is shifting or loading the sand in this point. And then from this point, there is another excavator that is removing this sand to the outside part of the plot. And there is a shovel which is loading these sands on a truck. So you see the same one cubic meter of sand is being shifted from excavator one to excavator two, then to the shovel, then to the truck. So this is multiple handling of the same materials. This is understood to be included in the rate that will be put against the item of excavation, let's say. So this is what they are trying to say here, that multiple handling of materials and the transporting them like within the site, this shall be understood to be included. Okay, continuing this subsection, earthwork support shall be given as an item. So if you need any type of earthwork support, shoring or whatever, you have to give that as an item. And there is the second point here in this slide, excavation in rock shall be so described. So if you have any rocks that you are excavating, you have to put in the description that you are or the excavation is happening in rock or you are excavating in rock soil. Alternatively, it may be measured as extra over the excavation. So if let's say that the site that you are excavating, part of the soil is rock, hard material that is very hard to be broken and excavated. So in that case, they are telling you, you have two options. The first option to make a specific item for the excavation in rock. And this will obviously have a higher rate than the normal excavation. Or you can have one item only for the excavation in general, and 
you have to mention in the description of this item that it includes rock. So in that case, whoever pricing will understand that this much volume is excavation, sand plus rock, okay? In case you are keeping the excavation in rock as a separate item, then you have to take the exact volume as a sand in the first item, which excavation in sand, then, and this will be the full volume that you are going to excavate, including the rock. And you can make another item, which includes the quantity of the rock only as extra. Okay, so here it may be measured as extra over the excavation. You can measure the total volume of the excavation plus the volume only of the rock. And the volume of excavation will include the rock as well. And here they are saying that is the volume of rock shall be measured, but no deduction shall be made from the volume of excavation in which the rock occurs, which I was explaining right now that you have this much of excavation. So this quantity will be put against one item that is called excavation in sand. And a portion of this quantity will be put again in another item, which is called excavation in rock. This is as per the principles of measurement international. What is rock? Like what is the rock? How they define the rock? Rock is defined as any material met, which is of such size or position that in the opinion of the employer's representative can only be removed by means of wedges, special plant or explosives. So what is a rock? You are keeping one item excavating in a rock. What is a rock? Rock means any item that is having a big size, let's say, or which is coming in a position which is very hard to excavate by the normal means. So it might need some wedges or a special constructional plant or some explosives in order to excavate that part. So that part is called rock as per the POMI. In subsection number eight, we were talking about the earthworks generally. Now let's go a little bit specific. So subsection number nine here is the excavation. And what they are saying, unless otherwise stated, excavation shall be measured by volume as the void which is to be occupied by the permanent construction or vertically above any part of the permanent construction. And it will be classified as follows. So this is what I was telling you. The excavation, what is the excavation? How to calculate the quantity of the excavation? The excavation is the volume of sand, for example, which is going to be replaced by a concrete foundation plus whatever on top of that. So if I am having a footing of one into one, that's one cubic meter. And this, the, the top of this footing is one meter below the natural ground level. So you have one cubic meter above the foundation and you have one meter for the foundation itself. One cubic meter. So two cubic meters will be the quantity. We are not allowing, as we have discussed in this video, we are not allowing for any workspace or anything like that. It is like you are cutting in a piece of cheese to drop one cube of metal or whatever, which is the foundation in this case. I hope it's clear. So it's classified as follows. Oversight excavation to remove topsoil, stating the average depth. So you can have this item that oversight excavation to remove topsoil, stating the average depth. So you can say excavation to remove the topsoil of, let's say, 10 or 20 centimeters or whatever in the description. And you can give the volume and excavation to reduce levels like you have a plot, a very big plot. And you want to reduce the whole level of this plot by, let's say, 10 or 20 centimeters. Then excavation in cuttings, which we have just discussed, basement excavation. Trench excavation to receive foundations, which shall include pile caps and ground beams. Then pit excavation to receive foundation bases, stating the number. And excavation for diaphragm walls, stating the width of the diaphragm wall. If you can, you can Google actually diaphragm wall, you will understand that it's uh, one type of the shoring types that we have. And shoring is giving supports or supporting the excavated soil. And you have to state the width of this diaphragm wall and the type of support fluid because the diaphragm wall is used when you want to prevent one fluid from entering to your site or to your excavation. So in most of the cases, it's groundwater 
So you have to state the type of the fluid that we have diaphragm wall for. It might be water, oil, petrol, whatever. So this is regarding the excavation. Excavation of trenches for service pipes, drain pipes, something like that. So you are excavating a trench, drain pipes, cables, or the like, shall be measured by length. So if you have an excavation like this, this will not be measured in cubic meter. It will be measured by length. Stating the average depth, what is the average depth of the trench that you are doing, and in that case, disposal and filling shall be understood to be included. And you have to mention this in the description, that this is a trench excavation with this much of average depth. And the rate that will be put again is this item shall be understood to include the disposal and the filling. So for excavation and tunneling, see close, which is subsection 24. We haven't reached that one yet, but when we reach that, when we reach subsection number 24, and we talk about tunneling, we will understand how to calculate the excavation of tunneling as per POMI. Okay, subsection number 10 here, which is dredging. Actually, this is not a part of POMI. I wanted to uh, explain to you what is dredging. So dredging is the excavation of material from a water environment. If you are excavating here, this part, then this is dredging. So dredging shall be measured by volume as well because in the end it's an excavation stating the location and limits. What is the depth of this strata that you are excavating or something like that? And unless otherwise stated, measurement shall be understood to be taken from soundings or water. So if you didn't say anything, if you just said that this is dredging, then whoever reading your BOQ or pricing your BOQ shall understand that this is an excavation in water environment okay subsection number 11 which is disposal so disposal of materials arising from excavation when you excavate something then what will happen to the excavated materials you have to dispose them so disposal of material arising from excavation bridging or tunneling shall be measured by volume as equal to the volume of excavation so whatever volume you excavate this much of volume you will dispose. So whatever volume you are getting from the excavation, dredging or tunneling, the same volume has to be disposed. Each shall be classified as follows, backfilled into excavation. So because when you are excavating something, you have an item in the BOQ for the excavation, then you have another item for the disposal. So this disposal, where you will dispose the sand that you have loaded on the truck from the excavation, you can backfill that again into excavation, like you will excavate some part and then you will have your foundations and all, and then you want to backfill again. So this can be backfilled into excavation. The disposed material can be backfilled into excavation or backfilled in making up levels. Sometimes you want to dispose the excavated materials on the site to raise the natural ground level, or here again, backfilled over site to make up levels given details of a special contouring, embankments, or the like, or removed, which includes providing a suitable tip. So this is an excavation that, or an excavated materials that you don't need anymore in the site, and you have to dispose it outside the site, then you have to mention where this material should go to. So this is regarding that disposal. Subsection number 12 here, which is filling, so all these are BOQ items that will come under the site works. And it doesn't mean that you need all of them. We have 24 or 26 subsections here. So you don't need all of them in your site works section in the POMI BOQ. No, you will just take the items or the subsections that are applicable for your project and you will list them in your BOQ and you will quantify these items in accordance with POMI. So subsection number 12, filling. So filling material other than that arising from excavation, dredging or tunneling. So when you say filling in the BOQ, you are talking about materials that are not arising from excavation, dredging or tunneling. Why? Because when we discussed in the subsection number 11 disposal, where are you going to dispose? You are going to dispose into excavation. So if you are backfilling something, with the selected materials arising from excavation, this should come under the disposal. But when we talk about filling, 
we are talking about filling material other than that arising from excavation, bridging, or tunneling. This shall be measured by volume as equal to the void to be filled. What is the volume of the void that you want to fill? This is the quantity of the filling materials. And this can be classified as follows, filled into excavation, filled in making up levels, filled oversight to make up levels, giving details of special contouring, embankments, and the like. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed the video, I will appreciate so much if you just subscribe. I don't know what's stopping you from subscribing. Subscribe, turn on notification and give us something in the comment. Let's have a discussion and a conversation. And again, thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate your valuable time if you reach up to here. Two quick things before we go. The first thing is that this presentation is made via Canva. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to try it. The second thing is our online courses, cost estimation, quantity surveying and procurement. Ton of information is there and I hope you like it. You can find also the links to these in the description. And about POMI, all the links to the previous videos are there in the description. You can go and start watching from the beginning because this is like a mini course. You are starting from the very beginning of the POMI and going all the sections one by one, reading and understanding what is there and how to implement that in our next BOQ. That's it for this video. Thank you so much and bye-bye.